All right. <clears throat> Today we are going to go through a uh, an exercise, and uh, we'll work through it together. All right. We will probably have an exercise next week where you'll work through it on your own. But this is sort of the first exercise we're gonna we're gonna go to from beginning to end, and um, so we'll work on it together. Now, the examples we looked at so far, we've looked at having a big chunk of data, a big table of data, and we've looked at separating it out. And sometimes that's how you create a database. You know, someone gives you a spreadsheet and says, I need a database for this. So you have the data, and you figure out how to separate it out. So that's one way, and I've created a lot of databases that way. Another possibility, though, is that um, you talk to the organization, and they give you a set of rules. All right, they explain to you what, the, what their business is like and, and how their business works and, and, and so on. And from that, you determine what the database should be. And so we've gone over a few examples of the first kind uh, where we've given a big spreadsheet-like chunk of data and you had to define a, a uh, uh, you had to break those down into separate tables. Um, this one, we're going to talk about some rules and I'm going to define some rules and um, we'll go from there and try to build a database. So I'm going to jot down some, some things. I might jot down phrases more than complete sentences, but since we're talking, um, you know, I can explain what I mean if, uh, if we forget later on. All right, we're going to design a database for like a clinic, all right? Um, you know, one of those little medical centers where there's a bunch of doctors. All right. Now, here's the rules of this clinic. All right. Several doctors work at the clinic. Okay. So it's not just one doctor, it's, it's a set of doctors. Um, I'm modeling this after my own doctor that I go to, all right? You know, she has a, uh, you know, a, an office that there's another four doctors or something like that. All right, so there's several doctors that work at this, at this clinic. Each doctor has a specialty. And examples of special, specialty might be pediatrics, um, uh, GP, general practitioner, or geriatrics for older people. So those are some, some examples of the specialties that um, the, each physician might have. All right. Third rule. Each patient has a primary doctor. All right. So each patient is, is assigned to the doctor of their choice. So that's their primary doctor. All right. Each patient. may have prescriptions may have several prescriptions and another way to saying that is that they're taking several medications all right So maybe I have the flu, the doctor uh, prescribes me a, um, what do they prescribe you for the flu? I don't know. <laughs> they prescribe you a, uh, yeah, they supply you, you know, they, they, they prescribe you Tylenol and an antihistamine or uh, a decongestant. Yeah, there you go, a decongestant and cough syrup, let's say. Now. Here's a little catch, all right? 
while each patient has a primary doctor, if that primary doctor isn't available, all right, then any physician of the clinic might write the prescription. So in other words, my doctor, Dr. Jones, is out on vacation this week and I have the flu. You know, they're not going to say, well, gee, you know, I uh, ho hope you're still around when <laughs> she comes back next week, you know. They'll say, okay, well, Dr. Smith then will write you a prescription for your antibiotic or decongestant or painkiller or whatever, all right? So that's the rules that we're going to build in this database. And the one thing I didn't specify is I didn't specify attributes um, for these. I haven't said, for example, what we need to store about a prescription, but we can sort of use common sense based on what we know, you know. Uh, about prescriptions. The big point in, in, in this example and in our first few examples is, is going to be in getting the structure right. And by structure I mean have identified all the entities and have created the relationships right. Um, if you do a good job with that, it doesn't guarantee success, but a lot of times the attributes sort of fall in place. It's pretty obvious, for example. You know, it's pretty obvious that you're storing the patient address with the patient and not with the doctor or prescription, right? All right? There, there's your hint for today. All right? <laughs> okay, let's think through this then. And uh, again, remember what our job is. Our job in doing any database design is identify the entities, Identify relationships and included in identifying the relationships is identifying the cardinality of the relationship. That is, is it a one to many or many to many? All right. Or a one to one, although we haven't talked about those. So your second hint of the night is we're probably not going to have any one to ones in this example. All right. Your third uh, goal is to identify attributes and associate with the proper entity. Now this isn't necessarily a one, two, three step process. You might do like all of them at the same time, sort of, or you know, you flip between all of them. You might identify an entity, identify a second entity, identify the relationship, put some attributes. So it's not like a, a smooth flowing one, two, three, four, but these are the activities that you're going to be involved with. Now, what does that mean? That means that every piece of information that you have about this problem is going to relate to one of these things. It might be an entity. All right? It might be an entity. It might be talking about a relationship. It might be simply an attribute that needs to be associated with one of the entities. So pretty much everything that we have, everything in this little story that I told about the doctor's clinic, probably is an entity, an aspect of a relationship, or some attribute. All right, so keep that in mind as you're going through this. All right, a lot of times, you know, people take uh, my advice and, and say that, you know, a noun equals entity, and they'll take that like, any noun is an entity, like we need to store the patient's address. Okay, there's an address entity. Well, not really. The address can simply be an attribute of, of the patient. So, let's start out. Let's start out, the, the logical way to start out is to start identifying some entities. What are some of the entities that you see in this problem? Doctor. All right, very good. Pardon me? That was deliberate. That doesn't count. What's another entity? Patient. Another entity? Prescription. Okay. Let's 
see this? Any other entities? I would say the medication is an entity. And we'll discuss why that is in, in a bit. It will relate to prescription to be sure, but the medications, the list of, of valid medications itself is also an entity. So yeah, it will definitely have a relationship with prescription, but they're two separate entities. In other words, there's one entity to say that there is a, uh, a medication um, named, um, yeah, I should have done some more research and come up with uh, the, uh, uh, Percocet, all right? There is a medication called Percocet, right? That's one fact. The fact that Joe Smith has been prescribed Percocet is another fact that we need to store in the database. So there's a, there's a, um, there's a, a, a table or an entity for the list of all the medications that could be prescribed, and then that has a relationship to the table that talks about what has been prescribed to a specific patient. Yes? Department or, or I think I use the phrase specialty, yeah. So I'm thinking that these are the entities involved here. Uh, absolutely. Okay, I understand how specialty could be a, mm -hmm. but also, I was also thinking maybe activity. You know what, that's a great question. And I, I, was, I could almost guarantee that someone was going to ask that question. So. It's almost like we got, we got together before class and, and, and when, when I put down the specialty entity, you know, that's the time to ask the question. Because that's a perfect point of discussion. And in fact, we can almost say the same thing for medication. All right? But we'll, we'll go back and we'll talk about, we'll, we'll start talking about specialty and that'll be a good one. What's the relationship between specialty and doctor? The way I have it defined here. Each doctor has how many specialties? Well, the way this is defined, it has a specialty. So, you know, yeah, so the way this is defined, a doctor has one specialty. A given specialty may be on several doctors. So there might be two pediatricians or three general practitioners. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a specialty ID in here and maybe a description. And in the doctor table, we're going to have a doctor ID, all right, you know, the doctor name, maybe some other attributes, but then because this is a one to many, the many side points to the one, therefore there'll be a specialty ID here. That'll be a foreign key. Now the question that you are asking is, why bother having this table? Why not just make the name of the specialty an attribute in the doctor table? Well, th th that's what the name could be, like the description. Like it could be pediatrician or geriatrics or general practitioner. What's the advantage of having a separate table that has a list of all those, um, all those uh, uh, specialties? Yes. Referential integrity. All right. How so? Exactly. There's only a limited number of specialties for doctors, right, in, in our clinic. I define three. There might be four or five or whatever, all right? But there's a certain number of things that a doctor can specialize in, and it has to be one of those things. So if I just made it an attribute in this table, specialty, I could put in to the database anything in that field, right? Um, and I could do it in an inconsistent manner. So. I could put pediatrician for one doctor and children's doctor for another doctor and, you know, we people's doctor for a third, you know. So there wouldn't be any guarantee of any sort of consistency and I couldn't establish a constraint to say that whatever I put in this table for the doctor's specialty has to match one of the handful of specialties that, um, that, that, that I've defined as being an allowable specialty. So that allows for consistency and allows for enforcing referential integrity. Hey, you got to pick from one of these five specialties for each doctor. If a new doctor started and had a specialty that wasn't there, then you'd first need to put the specialty in, then you could put the doctor in. But excellent question. You'll see this kind of thing all the time. And you'll, you may look and say, you know, why would I bother having that? 
you know. Maybe there's a student table, all right, that has information about the student, you know, let's say high school students. There might be a field for the class that they're in. Are they a freshman, junior, sophomore, or senior? Well, you might have a table of classes, freshman, junior, senior, and sophomore. Why? Just to make sure that that's the only choices that you can put in there. So you may have a lot of these tables. Sometimes they're called like code tables that their sole purpose is to allow you to establish referential integrity to make sure you have consistency and uh, make sure that, that you don't put in a value that's not allowable. So we'll see that over and over and over again. All right. Relationship between doctor and patient. The way this is, uh, again, that, that's one thing to keep in mind is, is we got to go by the rules as I've defined them for this example. Yes? One yeah, one to many. Because I'm saying each patient has a primary doctor. So there will be a patient has one doctor, a doctor has one patient. More than one patient, thank you. I did that to see if you were paying attention. I wonder at what point in my career I'll be able to say that and people will actually think I really did it to, to see if you were paying attention as opposed to... Not today. <laughs> I had a very old teacher, very old teacher, like when I was in the fourth grade, and she would nod off in front of class. All right, and she told us that she was testing us to make sure even when we weren't being watched, she was pretending to sleep so that we would think she's asleep and um, to see that if we would still behave ourselves even when no one was watching her. You know, even when I was in the fourth grade, I didn't believe that, you know. And I, de I definitely don't believe that now. You know, she was tired. She's just taking a nap, which, good for her. You know, I love taking naps too. All right. <laughs> now, getting back to this. Relationship between patient and prescription. One patient can have how many prescriptions? Many. A given prescription is for how many patients? A given prescription? One. One. Right. So in other words, the doctor writes me a prescription for something. Now, the doctor might write another prescription for the same medication, but it's a different prescription, right? It's a different prescription. So if both of us are getting, uh, you know, some antihistamine, then I have a prescription for it, you have a prescription for it, all right? Relationship between prescription and medication. Well, one medication can be on how many prescriptions? Many. A given prescriptions is for how many medications? Just one. All right. Now, pardon me? Thank you. I was. I started off slow, but then I'm building momentum. All right. Okay. Now, a couple things. Are we missing any relationships? I, th I think we are missing one relationship. Let's take a look at this and let's see what relationship we are missing. The doctor that wrote the prescription, right? Because typically that's going to be the person's primary doctor, but we said one of the rules is, is that any of the doctors at the clinic can write a prescription for any of the patients. So, we need this as well. Now, through our software, and this is something to remember, and we'll come back to this. It's always important to remember at this step, we're focusing on like the structure of the data, not how it's going to be entered, you know, not how the screens are going to look or how the reports are going to look or anything like that. We're trying to store the data in, in the best way possible following all the rules, the normalization rules, and all the rules for defining good tables. So you might say, well, gee, yeah, the doctor, it could be another doctor, but usually it's going to be the person's primary physician. 
okay, well, when you build your application, that application will default the, the, the prescribing doctor to the primary care physician. But they should be able to change it. So if Dr. Smith gives me the prescription instead of Dr. Jones, they should be able to pick Dr. Jones. So at this point, again, we're not worried about the way that we're accessing the data. We're worried about that fundamental data structure, the way data is being stored to solve this particular uh, rules. I want to take a, a, a brief little um, digression. All right. Because this looks correct. We can fill in some of the blanks, but I want to talk about how we could have gotten to the same goal through a different method. All right, just, just for the sake of argument. We noticed here that there was an entity called prescriptions. But it's possible, if you didn't notice it, that maybe you notice that there's a patient table and a medication table. If those were the only two tables we noticed, what would the relationship be? Many to many, right? If when we're designing this, we didn't notice that there was such a thing as a prescription, if we only noticed that there were patients and medication, we would say, well, one patient, they certainly can be taking multiple medications. And one medication can certainly be um, taken by more than one patient. So, we'd look at that and what would we say? We'd say, hey, you can't have a many-to-many -many in a relational database. You just can't implement it. Any many-to-many -many relationship, if you remember from last time, you have to break down into two one-to-manys. So, this is almost like a, a self-correcting mechanism. Because if you miss something, it's going to pop up. Because what am I going to do? I'm going to change this many-to-many to two one-to-manys. And patient medication And what is this table? Well, that is the fact that a certain patient takes a certain medication that's been given to them by a certain doctor. Oh, another word for that is a prescription. So it's kind of funny. You'll see that, that sometimes there's uh, several paths that you can take where you'll end up with the right answer, provided you take the thought process all the way through. So in a way, that's sort of a good thing. You know, so it is good if even if you miss something the first time around, sometimes you might see it, sometimes you might not. If you really follow the thought process through, a lot of times you'll come up with the same, same answer, all right, and same result. Let's put some attributes here, all right. Medication, there would be a medication ID, probably the name of the medication. Description. Good question. Dosage. Where does dosage belong? It belongs in a prescription, right? Because um, you may prescribe the same medication in a different dose for different people. So there'd be a dosage in here and maybe like a frequency or whatever here. So this table could have a prescription ID a patient ID, a medication ID, and a doctor ID, along with the dosage and frequency. Now this is a case where that intersecting table here is more than just the two keys, right? In the examples that we gave uh, before, like let's say we had, when we had the students and the clubs and we had the student club table. The only thing that the student club table contained were the two keys. That table only existed to say that here's the students that belong to this club, here's the students that belong to this club, and so on. This is a case of where this entity here actually has some attributes of its own. In other words, the dosage, we can't put the dosage on the patient table, right? A patient doesn't take 200 milligrams regardless of the medication you give them, right? That's 
kind of dangerous, all right? Likewise, the medication doesn't have a same dosage for everyone. The same, you know, every, every person prescribed it, you know, whether it be a, you know, a, a hundred pound 13 year old kid or a 200 pound guy aren't going to be given the same dosage, right? So there'll be a different dosage uh, uh, for that, and that will depend on the specific prescription. Or even the same person at a different point in time might have a different prescription. You know, if I had a really bad leg injury, I might get more of a painkiller than if I just had a slightly twisted ankle that bugs me when I try to go to sleep, but other than that, I'm okay with it. All right? So that would be an attribute on the prescription. Medication, again, is very similar to specialty in the sense that we want it there to be able to constrain the, uh, to create that referential integrity. Look at it this way. Let's say if there's a particular medication that's recalled. All right, we want to make sure we found every patient that's been prescribed that medication. If medication wasn't a separate entity, but instead, um, instead was simply an attribute in the prescription table, then there could be slight variations in spelling that would keep us from being able to find everyone that was prescribed some certain, um, some certain uh, prescription. Or, and again, thinking of how we could use this, um, maybe there would be medications that aren't good to take together. All right, you could actually come up with a medication interaction table that says, hey, don't take this if you're also taking that, right? So a lot of times you'll see that. You could actually build that into the database, all right? And you could write queries that if you tried to assign someone a prescription, if they were taking something that like doesn't mix with it, you could display some sort of warning or, or, or prohibit them from entering it or whatever you'd want to do, all right? This is sort of an advanced aspect of it, uh, but let's think through that for a second. What would a table that would contain bad interactions look like? Well, it probably would have two medication IDs, med1, med2. It would probably have a, a generated key and it probably would have a description of what could go wrong. And then each of these would be a foreign key to the medication ID. Can I have two foreign keys between two different tables? Yeah, you actually can. Um, maybe a, 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 an easier to understand example is if I was doing a, uh, a football schedule and I had a game table. All right? In a game, there's a home team and a visiting team. Right? Both of those are teams, all right? So I could make my game table have a relationship or actually have two relationships to the team table. The home team ID would have a relationship to a team ID as would the visiting team. So that's kind of what we could do if we were doing interaction. And the nice thing is, again, is we're talking about how to store data. How we could go on and query it later on would be very flexible. The other thing I could see doing is having a manufacturer table of the medication. You know, that way you, you would have information about who, what the organization that manufactures that medication was and so on. I didn't include that in the initial specification, but just thinking it through, you know, there's a handful of pharmaceutical companies that make most of the medications and it probably would be a good idea, you know, uh, if you're writing a prescription. Yes? Uh -huh. I use, but the, way I, the way you can do it is if you just look at manufacturers, uh -huh. you only get the medications that pertain to that manufacturer. Right, right, so yeah. That would be one benefit for having that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and one benefit for that would be, um, let's say you wanted, uh, you, you knew that the sales rep from Pfizer is coming in you could look and see what they offered and ask for samples of certain medication or whatever if you're the doctor, you know, if the, if the Pfizer sales rep was coming in or something like that. Yeah, so there'd be a lot of advantages for that. Again, that is sort of getting in, into developing the program that's going to access this more so than the, um, the underlying data. 
that's one thing that in access those two things are sort of mixed together and and, and probably uh, what what do you use on the, on the Mac FileMaker. FileMaker yeah pro that probably has the underlying storage of the data and gives you a way to interface to it all right uh, in a lot of cases with larger more enterprise databases those two things are separate. In other words, it will be stored in a SQL Server database or an Oracle database, and you will write a C Sharp program to access it and manipulate it. So the storage and the code is, is kind of separate in larger enterprise ones. In, the, in personal sort of databases, those two things tend to be mixed. All right. The focus for us now, though, is considering how we're going to store that. All right. Let's go in and we may not have defined all the attributes, but we probably have defined enough of the attributes that we can go in and build this. All right. One last word though. Let's look at this prescription table one more time before we actually get into access and build it. I said the key to the prescription table would be prescription ID. And there would be, actually let me, let me redraw this. Because I want to compare this to what we did last, last time. The primary key to the prescription table we defined would be a prescription ID. And we said there'd be a patient ID, a, uh, a med ID, a doctor ID, and some other fields. And these would be foreign keys over to their respective tables. The example we gave last time talked about students and clubs, all right? And we said this, student table, student club table, and club table. And we defined in this case, we defined the primary key as being the student ID and the club ID, and those also being foreign keys to their respective tables. Now here's my question. We're doing it a little bit different way, right, in this case. In this case, we have a two-part primary key. Each part is also a foreign key. In this case, we have a separate primary key, a prescription ID. It's one part. It would be an auto number key. And then we have patient ID and med ID as foreign keys. What's the difference between these two? Why would I do it one way versus another? It might be a, might be a pretty tricky question. I, I, if it's a little puzzling, don't worry about it. Here's the answer I would give. You could actually do, well, I was going to say, you could, you, you could have done this, the student club this one this way, but then you'd have the unlikely event of a student being in the same club twice. That really doesn't happen, all right? In this case, the combination of student and club is unique, right? A person's only in a club once. There'd be no need to put me in the ski club twice, right? So therefore, my combination of student ID and the, the, the club ID for the ski club, it's okay that that's unique. It's okay that that's a foreign key. In the case of prescription, can a person get two prescriptions for the same medication? Sure. All right. They get a prescription, and then when that runs out, they get their next prescription, and, and so on. If I made the combination of the prescription ID, I'm sorry, the patient ID and the med ID, if I made that the primary key, then they could only have one prescription for that combination, and that's not a good idea. So that's a little bit different intersecting entity than that one is. Um, you actually could do the same thing here. You'd have to make a unique index on that. We won't go that way there. We'll just say in one case it's better to do it that way. In the other case, it's better to do it the other way. All right. Let's build some tables now. And we should, 
uh, I don't know, we'll, either, we'll get through either most of it or all of it today. So let's go in and, and start building some tables. I may put a couple extra attributes here, depending on that. All right, let's go in to access. And I will click, I want to create a new blank database. I want to make it on the desktop. And we'll call it clinic. And we'll click OK and then create. One more question. How come we don't have a table for clinic? There's only one. All right, it's not, it, it, it's not really a, an entity, really. All these tables taken together is a model of the clinic. Now, if our clinic had branches, for example, like maybe there was a Lorraine and a Lyria, Amherst or whatever, and each, there was doctors that work certain branches, then maybe you'd have a, a, a branch table or something like that. But yeah, in this case, there's only one clinic, so there's really no need to have a, a clinic table. Everything is part of this one clinic. All right, so let's go in, and I'm going to start by creating my specialty table. As always, I'm going to go into design view, type in specialty. Is that right? key will be specialty ID. It'll be an auto number. And I'll make the attribute the description of it. Which is probably all, all you need. Actually, I'll make a name and a description. All right. We can save that. Pretty painless. Go up to create <coughs> table. Right mouse on there, go into design view, and I will make my doctor table. Now to be sure there'd be other attributes, you know, phone extension. Uh, let's put a couple of them in. We'll put a phone number in, maybe an email address. Um, yeah, the, the office number. Definitely a specialty ID though, exactly. And I'll make it a number, right? Again. Auto number in a primary key, when it's a foreign key, it just becomes a number because we don't want it to generate a new number. We want to match it up with the number that's already there. <clears throat> All right. How about we do doctor, patient, and specialty, and then we'll create the relationships for those three, and then we'll add on the rest of the tables. All right, seems like a plan that way. We'll do at least part of it all the way through, and if we leave parts of it, other parts of it hanging, then we can pick up those on uh, Tuesday. Patient. All right. Patient ID, patient name. Doctor ID. Yeah. And then things such as address, city, state, zip, phone. Of course, you can tell I never actually developed a database for a doctor. How can you tell that? Yeah, there's no insurance table or fees or anything like that. I just thought of that. You'd probably have some sort of insurance uh, yeah, insurance information, and there probably will be a, a key for that. So, yeah, the fact that I omitted that shows that this was just an exercise that I'm not drawing from actual personal lifetime experience. All right. 
So let's go in and let's create the foreign keys for these three to make uh, the relationships between these three go. So we'll go to Tools and Relationships, and I'll pick these three tables, Add, <coughs> and I'll go and I'll drag the doctor ID to the doctor ID. Notice before I did this, I closed out all the tables, right? Um, that way I won't get that error saying that, um, you know, the table's in use. I'm also doing this before I enter any data in, right? Because I don't want to enter in some bogus specialty for a doctor and then find out I can't create the foreign key. Since I'm doing this from scratch, I'm going to get the relationships right. So right, from the, right off the bat, when I start putting data in, the data's going to be, going to be good. All right. So really, the only thing that could go wrong is if I had the wrong data type, all right, or if I was matching the wrong number of fields. But since these are all single part, really, the only thing that could go wrong is that I have the wrong data type. And if I was careful with that, I should be able to make these foreign keys. All right. Now let's go in and enter some data in these. So I'll go in. Actually, before I do that, let's make a form to enter the data in. In the past, we've just been going in into this, which is called the data sheet view, which is sort of a clunky way to enter data. All right? you, you wouldn't, in a real application, you wouldn't want to force people to enter data in this way. So we're going to make a form for specialty. All right? And I'm going to uh, click on it, create, form. And watch what it did. All right, actually did something pretty cool. It created a form with a subform. What do I mean? I mean it actually created a form that allowed me to put specialties in, and allow me to put specialties. I'm sorry, doctors that have that specialty in. All right. So in other words. This is the specialty information. Underneath here is going to be all the doctors that have that specialty, which is, is pretty cool. And it did that for me automatically. Now, there's some slight problems when you generate it automatically. Sometimes it doesn't do it exactly the way you want to. But if you're doing something quick and dirty, or if you're developing a prototype, um, or if it's a, a simplistic sort of problem, sometimes this could work out really good for you. So let's go in and enter in some specialties. This, by the way, is an example of a user-friendly form. I don't have to remember the specialty IDs all right, when I put in a doctor. In other words, I don't have to say, gee, let's see, a pediatrician, is that one or two? I just, when I pull a pediatrician, I can enter all the pediatricians underneath uh, the category. Yes? How come we first lab and create the form? Uh-huh. Um, my, my best guess is if the foreign key wasn't created, it wouldn't give you the subform. Okay, so. so creating the foreign key is what makes it know that those two tie together. The yeah, it, it might be. It might be the other thing might be just the manner in which it was created or whatever. Um, we'll see. This again, this is just the quick and dirty way to make a form. All right. Which again, you know, sometimes it works. Sometimes that's all you need. All right, but yeah, either the either the, the manner in which you made it, or or the fact the foreign key wasn't defined. But I can go in here and I can run this form, go into form view, and I can type in pediatrician, a doctor for kids, and doctor. Um, Smith, thank you. <laughs> Phone, we'll skip those. Dr. Jones, no imagination. Wilson. All right. Now, notice the way this works. There's some navigation on these, on these uh, forms. All right. There's actually two navigations because this is a form with a subform. On the bottom is the navigation for the main form. 
Here is the navigation for the subform. So actually I could scroll through the doctors just by, you know, I'm going down the list of them. All right. Or if it got to be more than however many lines are here, I, there'd actually be a scroll bar I could scroll through. This allows me to scroll through the specialties. So if I go in and put, I can put in the next doctor's type. And I can put in Dr. Adams Dr. Washington. All right. And I can scroll back. If I go there, I can see the list of all the pediatricians. If I go here, um, I can see uh, a, a list of the general practitioners and so on and so forth. It's a nice way to get data into the table, right, uh, without having to go and remember, gee, what was, what was a GP's code again? It was at two or a three or whatever. And again, for the first few examples, that's the most simplistic way to do it. That's why we did it that way. But going forward, we want to learn how to not just to de declare the data, but do at least a little bit in terms of application development and put a nice little front end on this so that we can give it to someone and they can go and enter data in, in a user-friendly fashion. All right. Let's close out of this. Now it shows as, as a specialty form. It takes a while to get used to these icons. I think with my, with my vision, all those icons look the same to me, so I could never tell. But what you can do is you can filter out and say, I want to see only forms, and it will show you only the forms. Or I want to see all objects, and it will show me all the objects and break it down by forms. Or I want to see everything related to specialty, and it will show me the specialty table and form. So there's a couple different ways you can use this little navigation to show um, the stuff. I liked, I'd rather have it on object type and show all, all access objects. Then I can see all the tables together, all the forms together, all the reports together. But again, you know, your mileage may vary, whatever, whatever makes sense for you. All right. Let's go build now uh, a form for the patient table. So we'll go to create, form. Now, notice what we got here. We have a form. But, we go to form view to enter data in. We don't have an easy way of seeing what the doctors are. All right, so we'd have to know what the doctor ID is. Let's see, my doctor is Dr. Adams, let's say. What's Dr. Adams' number? I have no clue. It's four, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I don't have a clue, all right? Okay, so what do I do? Well. I'm going to introduce something today, and we'll come back to this, because folks find this a little tricky sometimes, but we'll, uh, we'll go over example or example. We're going to build a drop down on this form so that we can, instead of having to type in the right number, we can choose from a list of doctors. And it's actually pretty straightforward. There's maybe four or five steps, and usually one or two of the steps are the only steps that, that cause problems. So I'll make a point to highlight those. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into design view. And I'm going to get rid of the doctor ID. And everything else. All right, so I get rid of the doctor ID. So we no longer have a text box for it. We want a drop down list. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pick that I want a combo box. I will call these drop-down lists just because usually that's what they call them in, in, in web applications, but the, the proper term in access is a combo box. So I'll click that and I'll put it on my form. We now get a wizard. All right. And we'll go through these questions and we'll go through it once. I don't expect you to be perfect on this after going through it once, but at least it will give you sort of an idea how this is going to work. 
first thing I want to do is for this kind of combo box, which is the one we'll probably use most of the time, hint, hint, we pick this one. I want the combo box to look up the values in a table or query. In other words, I want to show, to look up what doctors are in the doctor table. So I click next. What table or query should provide the values from the combo box? Well, where am I getting my list of things? Well, I want a list of doctors. It's in the doctor table. What do I want to show in the combo box? Well, I want to pick based on the doctor's name. Do I want to sort it? Yeah, I could sort it. Doesn't matter. That shows me what the drop down is going to look like. And then the last one is the one that uh, most people mess up if they're going to mess up any of them. And that says, what do I want to do for this? You want the second option. You want to take the ID, you want to take whatever primary key matches that select the doctor and you want to stuff it in the patient's doctor ID. So the doctor ID from the doctor table goes into the doctor ID in the patient table. The last one is just going to ask me for a name for this. I'll say doctor, finish, and away we go. All right, we can line this up if we want. Now, if we go into form view, I can go and I can pick Dr. Adams for me. I can go in and enter the next person. And I can pick their doctor. And so on down the line. Now if we look in the table, <clears throat> if we look in the patient table, notice that sure enough, you're right, Adams is number four. It stores the ID that matches the one that I picked. So by using the, 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 the drop down or the combo box wizard, it's pretty easy to do something like that. And it's a real good idea to do that. I will say the book doesn't necessarily give good instructions on how to do that. The book may actually not give any instructions on how to do that. Um, I, uh, I will post a little document I created along with this lecture that will hopefully give you, uh, um, give you a better idea of how to use this. But it's a good idea anytime you're doing a table lookup or anytime you have a foreign key to, to do, use a drop down because you don't want to depend on the person knowing all those values. All right? You want them again to simply pick from a list. All right. Next time we will finish up this and we will likely have uh, another exercise. For the next few weeks, the drill is going to be very similar. Um, we are going to go over more and more examples and some of the examples we'll work through together. Some of the examples I'll give to you, you'll have some time to work on it, and we'll come back and discuss. And then we'll sort of stretch our access skills by, after we've designed it, putting it in access and doing some, some neat stuff with it. All right, that's all I had for tonight. Again, three minutes over, giving you more than your money's worth again. All right, we'll see you over in lab.